I want to share with you this morning, if you got your Bibles and want to follow me, just a, <clears throat> about three or four various, various verses from God's Word, basically from the book of Psalms, and then one from the book of Proverbs. Psalms 917, if you'd like to follow in, the, in, in God's Word with me, you can do this. Uh, <clears throat> Psalms. We'll start here, not be lengthy, except just to read what I believe is appropriate for the hour we're living, the times we're facing, the issues that are before us as a nation. Folks, I believe it's time that God's people woke up, amen. amen. I really do. I, I'll be saying a little more about that in the message, but uh, we need to somehow shake up uh, it's God's people that's going to make the difference. Am I right or wrong? Amen? I believe that with all my heart. Psalms 9 17, if you got your Bibles. <clears throat> Some of these scriptures are tough, but they're true. Like it or lump it or believe it or just discard it, that's your privilege. But nevertheless, they're in God's Word. And God says in Psalms 9 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. I believe America ought to take heed to that warning. Amen. Amen. If you will. Look at Psalms 33, if you want to follow me uh, in the uh, a verse here. Psalms 33, <clears throat> verse 12. It says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. If a nation wants to keep the blessing of God upon it, it needs to keep blessing the God who watches over it. Then turn to Psalms 113, if you will, just for a few moments this morning. Psalms 113, verse 4. The Bible says, The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. We need to understand that as an individual, as a Christian or non-Christian, it makes no difference. God is above all of us. God is watching our nation. I believe this with all my heart and soul. And our nation needs to wake up to realize it's God who is in control, not Washington, D.C. Amen. Yeah. Then one more, Proverbs 14. It's amazing how much God is interested in, in nations, folks. Uh, uh, Proverbs 14, 34. You find this recorded. And I like this one. The Bible says, Righteousness exalteth a nation. Righteousness exalteth a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. I would say this morning, all of our governing officials should know these words of God I read this morning. Somehow they need to be aware that God is in control of this whole situation. And sometimes we need to be aware of that too in our own lives. God is, what you know, we look at this, and sometimes we see the bleakness of it, and we, and, and we can get discouraged about it, and we go get worried about it, and fearful about it, and all of this. But every once in a while, we just need to be reminded there is a God in heaven, and that God is in control of all things. Amen. 
He knows all things. Now, as you know, all know, yesterday, across this great land, thousands of proud Americans celebrated the 244th birthday of our great nation. And so in honor of that wonderful day, we're a day late, but we're celebrating it. And I want to preach for a few moments this morning on this subject, why I love America. Why I love America. And I want to begin by saying this morning, I not only love America, but I, for one, am proud to be an American. Amen. Amen. I will never apologize. I'll never bow down. I'll never give up my heritage of praise God this morning and being thankful that I was born in America. Oh, oh, she's not perfect. She never has been. But in spite of all her faults, hear me this morning, at least I believe this, America is still the greatest nation the world has ever known. I believe we need, to, we need to bury that deep within our hearts. Now down through the years, she has endured many, many things, many conflicts, many attacks. But you know something? This great nation has come victorious through them all. And what, as one of our, I believe, our officers said this morning, we are going to come through this one too. Amen. And, and our country is, is I, I'm still positive, I believe America is going to come through it victorious as she always has. All oh, the battle may be hard. The struggle may be uh, uh, difficult. It may, be, uh, 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 it may take quite a while to do it. But praise God this morning, folks. This is still America, and America will face it and America will win it. Amen. Amen. I really do believe this. But she's under attack again. We know this. Everyone in this room realizes what I'm talking about. There are those this morning who want to destroy our history and our heritage. And in the attempt is simply this. That is to change America from a nation of freedom into a nation of a socialist and communist society. That's what's behind what's going on in America today, whether you believe it or not. And I want to say this to those thugs, those mobs, those... I don't know what else, I don't know if I have the adjective or not. The anarchists... The criminals, the rioters, and the looters. I wish you could hear it out there. I'm talking about those who are burning our cities and destroying our national monuments. I want to say this. If you hate America so much, get out! <laughs> Go to some country that holds the values that you hold. But let me say this. If you go to any other nation that holds the values that you hold, you won't be there five minutes until you'll be screaming, wanting to come back to America. No matter how many buildings they burn, no matter how many monuments they tear down, this old glory here, this great, na great nation I'm a part of, it's faced a lot worse. And it's going to come through this, as I said. You see, when, it's, when, all, this, when, all, the, when all this movement, whatever they want to call it, when this movement is in its own ash heap, I almost want to shout as a Baptist, and Baptists don't shout, something's wrong with them. But when, when their movement is in the, in the Nash heap, you hear me this morning, America will still be the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. She'll still be here. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Now, I do believe America is at a crossroads. Don't misunderstand me. I really do. That's why I'm so concerned. As not only, I'm not only concerned as a, a, a pastor, seeing what is happening to our country morally, but I'm concerned as a citizen, seeing what's happening to our country nationally. And it bothers me and it concerns me out there. And I believe America is at a crossroads. I believe that our constitutional republic is at danger. I really believe that. That's why we need to wake up and stand up and speak out. Because just as this coronavirus is real, I know it's real. I know it's dangerous. And I know we need to be aware of it. But folks, I'm telling you this morning, what's happening to America nationally, we, we need to really wake up about that we really really do and if these radicals and these socialists they get control of america you can mark it down the america that you know sitting right here this morning the america you know will be no more i cannot get people to understand the seriousness of this thing i just can't people just don't yeah. They just cannot picture that there's a possibility that we could lose all these great blessings that God has blessed us with. Somehow we cannot have the cannot get, get the conception that it's real. And if America is ever, listen to me. If America is ever taken over by these socialists and these radicals, these left-wingers, every young man and young woman, thousands of them, if we lose America, this ought to shake you up. They will have died in vain. All those graves around the world where those precious bodies lie will have meant nothing if this radical bunch takes over this country. That's how serious it is. And so that's why I, as a citizen, that's why I, as a Christian, that's why I, as a pastor, will stand against those who despise our freedom. I'll stand against those who disrespect our flag. I'll stand against those who desecrate our monuments. I stand against those who will destruct our cities. I stand against those who detest our Constitution. I stand against those who will destroy our way of life. And I stand against those that would defund our police department. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to say this. I am proud as an American that we have a president who stands against every one of these things that I mentioned this morning. Amen. And I know these law enforcement officers are proud they have a president that stands behind them too. He's said it many times and he means what he says. And folks, I digress a moment. If ever a man needed prayer, if ever a man needed support, if ever a man needed to know that the good, righteous, God-fearing people are behind him, we need to pray for President Trump. Amen. Amen. We need to pray for him. And, so what I, and I, for one, am going to do everything I can. I know we're a small church. And I know, you know, we say, well, what can we do? I'll give you a moment what we can do. 
in, you know. But whatever I can do, I want to say this. I, whatever it is, I, I could, whatever I can contribute to making our America great, I want to stand behind my president. I want to defend it against a radical, ruthless, socialist aggression. And I want to keep America great. Amen. Why? Why? Because I love America. I can't say it enough. I can't say it more emphatically. Because I love America. Three reasons why I love America, and I'll be done. You may have your own reasons. I hope you do, and I hope you love her. But I would say to anyone, whether you're one of these radicals and socialists, If you don't love her, leave her. Amen. Amen. I had somebody say the other day, preacher, if, they, uh, if, I, if I knew who they were, I'd pay their way. <laughs> uh, I'd pay their way. I love America. Why? First of all, I love America because of her godly foundation. I hope you'll follow me closely. I hope I can make it clear. I love America, first of all, because of her godly foundation. Our text in Psalm said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And let me say this, although they're doing everything in their power to eliminate any reference in America to God, to eliminate him from every segment of our society, the fact remains, like it or lump it, you cannot deny it, America was established as a Christian nation. Amen. Obama had it 100% raw. This nation was founded on Christian values. All, almost, not all of them, almost of our founding fathers were Christian. But those that were not, if you, if you haven't read history recently, you should go back and read. Those that were not professed Christians, every one of them, you can read their testimony, every one of them supported the Christian values from God's word. Every one of them, every 56, every 56 of them, every one of them did that. You see, our nation actually was conceived and founded, now follow me, on, on a dual foundation. The Constitution is our national foundation and the Bible is our spiritual foundation. Our founders were involved with both. The Bible says in Psalms 100 and, uh, excuse me, uh, Psalms 11, 3, if the, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Folks, this is what I'm getting at. It's our foundations that are being attacked. If this, if our foundation, listen to me this morning, if our foundations crumble, this whole nation is going to crumble. When you build anything, you build it on a foundation. And the strength of that thing is how strong that foundation is. And if they destroy our foundation, there's nothing Nothing left. Am I right or wrong? Right. Nothing left. And that's what they're attempting to do. So what are you saying for you? I'm saying three things. Americans who love America need to do three things. They need to wake up, understand the seriousness of the hour in which we're facing, 
wake up. They need to stand up and be counted. And do, listen, no American has any apology to anybody for being an American. And then we need to speak up when we can. Not ashamed. Hey, they're not ashamed of the radical uh, agenda that they're spewing out of their filthy mouth. We ought not to be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ and to let them know where we stand as a Christian. Can I have some amens? Are y'all dead? Amen. Either you wake up, either you stand up, either you speak up, or you begin to plan to live under a socialist society. I love America because of her godly foundation. Number two, I love America because of the glorious form of government we have. Are you with me? The glorious form of government we have. Proverbs 29. In Proverbs 29, verse 2. You need to understand this verse, brother. Proverbs 29, 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Mark it down. When the righteous are in authority and doing what that is right, leading in the right direction, up, upholding our constitution, enforcing our laws, That makes people happy. But when the wicked are in authority, spitting on our flag, tearing down our monuments, burning our cities, I'm telling you something. There's been a lot of mourning going on in America recently. You see, all, all, all nations are governed by two things. Or one of two things. Let me put it. One of two things. It's either a dictatorship or it's a democracy. One is the rule of absolute authority, dictatorship, or the other is a rule decided and chosen by the people, a democracy. Now, I understand America is not a total democracy. Actually, I got a term. I... I thought of this myself. I had an original thought once. <laughs> We're actually a decisive republic. What do you mean, preacher? We are a government where the people themselves make a decision and choose and decide who they wish to rule over them. We're a decisive republic. That's what America is. You see, the people are the ones that the people put in authority to rule over them. They're going to get what they vote for. Mark it down. And I'm going to say this. I want, there are folk out there listening. If you're not registered and you do not vote, you do not have a right to say or gripe or complain or say anything about it. But we have a choice. That's still We still do yet. One day we won't if things don't change. But we have a choice. Each one of us individually can make a decision. Folks, I'm telling you, that's the greatest government in the world. Amen. 
You don't like it? Go to China. You won't like that very much. Afghanistan, go there. You won't like that very much. And if we vote for wickedness, we're going to have to live with wickedness. Come on now. If we vote for righteousness, we'll live with righteousness. I love America because of this constitutional government that we have. You say, why is it the greatest government in the world, preacher? Let me give you three reasons why it's the greatest government in the world. It's the greatest government in the world, first of all, because it was conceived by prayer. I don't know how much history any of you know. <clears throat> But if you don't, you should, you should look into some of this stuff. Before they made a final decision on the Declaration of Independence, they were going to vote on it. And I, and I, <clears throat> I do not remember which, who it was, I could, but it was either George Washington or Benjamin Franklin or one of, the, one of those men. They were, they were kicking it around. That's what, uh, you know, that's what you do. <clears throat> they were knocking it around, knocking it and this and that, and this and all this, and this ought to be in it, and that ought to be in it. And, and they were trying to form, form the Constitution. And one of those men, I believe it was George Washington, but I'm not sure. But one of them said, men, I make a motion we dismiss for seven days. And we go home and we pray for seven days before we come back. That's history. You won't hear that in the history books. You won't hear that in those uh, public schools today. But that's fact. And they went home and for seven days, we suppose they, most of them prayed. We don't, but they went home and prayed. And they came back. And guess what we got? The Constitution of the United States of America. It was conceived in prayer. Not only that, it was confirmed by the people. The people had a voice. This is what they wanted. It wasn't shoved down their throats. They saw what a wonderful piece of paper it was. And they accepted it. And then, listen to me this morning. Of all the many things they're trying to destroy in America, the main thing is that piece of paper known as the Constitution of the United States. They're doing everything in their power to destroy it. And, and if they can, to change it into whatever they want to change it to. Amen. But that's why we've got a great government. Because it was conceived in prayer. It was conformed by the people. And thirdly, because it coexists by participation. Every one of us in this building this morning has a part to say in what kind of government we're going to have. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Somebody said, oh, preacher, my, my vote don't count. It isn't important. You may not know this. You, you can fact check me on these things if you want to. You may not know this. Did you know that Adolf Hitler got in power by one vote? Look it up. You'll get something. Adolf Hitler became what he was by one, one, one vote. Don't tell me your vote doesn't count. Amen. 
I just say this quickly. No government in the world compares to ours. That's why I love America. Number three, and I'm done. I love America not only because of her godly foundation. I love America not only because of her glorious form of government. But I've got jotted down here. I love America because of the great freedoms it has afforded me. That's what this is all about today. Folks, don't you realize that we in America, sitting here in this church today, free from oppression, free from uh, so many things, that we're enjoying what millions around the world wish they could enjoy today. Why do you think they're trying to come to America? They want, they want what we have. What is it? Freedom! Amen! Amen. We're, got, we're, we're, we're on the verge of losing it. I believe that. We're on the down path to having it be taken away. But all oh, listen this morning. Here's the irony of it all. These mobs have the right to protest. Now, I didn't say burn. They don't have a right to do that. They don't have a right to attack police. Amen. Amen. They don't have a right to destroy property. But we in America do have a right, and they use this on TV. I almost wanted to go throw up every time I heard them say it. Oh, it's a peaceful protest. Come again? Come again? Look at those uh, uh, those uh, police cruisers crushed and burned. Look at those buildings and those businesses burned and looted and robbed. Peaceful, my foot. But the, they do have a right to protest. And not th those dummies do not realize that right will be taken away if they get their, their wishes. <laughs> Self-suicide. Crazy. Crazy. But, they, but listen to what I'm saying is, oh, hey! Try, let them, let them try what they're doing and they're still doing it. Let them try to do it in any other country in the world and see what happens. I'd love for them to try it in China. We'd never see them again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Folks, do you realize what you've got here? Do you realize? It's freedom. We still got it. I can drive anywhere in the United States I want to drive. Oh, we got law. We ought to have laws. You can't have a, you can't have a country without laws, and that's what they're trying to. That's listen to me. That's what they're trying to form is a government that's lawless and without laws. I'm going to tell you, they're not going to like it if they get it. I've talked to some of these officers down here. And I thank God for our community, and I thank God, uh, you know, uh, for our people in Charlotte County and Shoulder County and all the, these counties around. We're not facing really as uh, difficult as these other places are facing. Thank God for that. But did you know that some of them 
if you've been following the news, some of them are beginning to find out what it's like to call the police and not have the police come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One testimony was they call 911 and 911 says we can't send anybody. You're not going to like it. If you lose your freedom, you're going to lose everything America stands for. You mark it down. And what I'm saying is, this should remind us how Fragile freedom really is. <laughs> You've heard this saying, freedom is not free. It isn't. Freedom costs something, amen? amen. That's, uh, you know, <laughs> that's another thing. This bunch wants free, free this and free that. <laughs> I don't know who's going to supply it. Yeah. But freedom isn't free. Real freedom costs something. Now, I could be wrong, but I jotted down three things I believe it cost us. I believe, first of all, it cost us courage to defend it. Amen. They should have stopped those riots and those burnings the very first week they began. Because the more you let them go on, the more it's going to go on. Oh, yeah, it costs something to defend it, but it, if you don't defend it, hear me this morning, if you don't defend it, you're going to lose it. It costs not only courage to defend it, but it costs conviction to keep on defending it. You've got to believe, listen to me church, you've got to believe that freedom is worth defending. Amen. When you lose that, goodbye. And thirdly, it's going to cost a commitment to keep on defending it. I love America. might sound like that I've sort of give up hope on America. I haven't. I believe that there's still hope for America. Can I have an amen? amen? I believe that with all my heart and soul. I'm praying. <laughs> oh, am I praying. But if godly, godly people do not rise up and keep in leadership or put in leadership the right kind of leadership, we're going to lose it. I'm not a prophet, don't tend to be, never was called to be one. I just know what's going on. So you say, preacher, what can I do? Three things you can do, and I'm done. Three things. First of all, you can pray earnestly that God will intervene Amen. on behalf of America. Can I have a Amen. You can pray earnestly that God will intervene for us. Number two, you can personally stay informed of the issues and what's going on. Ignorance is what's wrong with America. And number three, you can participate by taking a stand and if nothing else, you can go to those polls and you can cast your vote and then you can say, I live with the vote I cast for. I love America. Do you love America? Do you love America? 
I thank God for these men and ladies here this morning. That's, that's my defense sitting there. And that's your defense. They, uh, they'll be there when you call them. And they'll stand between you and whatever it might be if they have to. We must never forget to pray for them, to thank God for them, and when you can, to thank them. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together this morning. God bless you. I do not know if anyone here has, has anything on your heart that needs to be taken care of between you and God. And I know it's not been evangelistic. I haven't preached hell and brim, damn brimstone and all of this. But I have been trying to lay upon your heart what we're facing. And how as God's people we need to respond to it. And we need to pray for America. I guess someone would say, well, you're a fanatic for America. I'm a fanatic for America. Because I know, I know, if we lose it, I know. I hope you do too. But by chance this morning, maybe there's one or two or, or, or someone here this morning just needs to come for a moment. Have a total talk with Jesus in a time like this. Maybe in your own life you've not been being what God wants you to be. Maybe you've not been living like God wants you to live. Maybe you're here not a Christian. You've not been saved. You may not even know what the term means, but you know this morning that you're not in a right relationship with God. We'd like to give you. We'd like to talk to you. We'd like to talk to you. Maybe you're here this morning. Praying about a church home or something. We don't give invitation to embarrass anybody. Or anything. We do it because the Bible says to invite folks to do, make, make decisions. So I'm going to ask Brother Harry to come and lead us in two verses this morning. If you have anything on your heart, maybe you just maybe as America, this would be hey, what better time as an American? You you might just want to make it. You publicly come and have a, a little prayer at the altar for, for America. Oh, what a wonderful thing that would be. Whatever God lays on your heart this morning. Brother Harry, you come. What number? 319. 319. If you got a hymn book, you get it. And if you need it, we, I'll counsel with you if you need, want to. But if you just need to come as an American... Thank God for America, whatever this morning. Let's respond if God speaks to us on this beautiful day. Brother Harry.